is always begins in God's sovereign, gracious, eternal will. Those who receive God's mercy receive it solely by His grace. Ishmael, you say, well, how's that true? Ishmael desired the blessings but failed to receive it. Esau ran, the man who runs in the verse, for the blessing, as it were, but also failed to receive it. So Ishmael was the man who willed the blessing and re was refused. And, and Esau ran to get the blessings and did not receive it. Esau received the blessing from his father, but not the blessing he sought with tears because he was ungodly and sought the blessings without repentance of faith. So there are many people who want to be saved but without repentance. They want heaven without Christ. They'll go through baptism. They'll go through all kinds of things, join the church without repentance. Salvation is granted to a person who, who, is, who, who receives the call from God and they truly repent. And Paul writes of God's mercy on those those who are dead in their trespasses and sin, Ephesians chapter 2. But God, being rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace are ye saved. Verse 17. For the Scripture saith unto Pharaoh... Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all of the earth. For the scripture said to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. Scripture. It means the writings. It means first a writing of things written, a document. It's used in such a way that quoting Scripture is understood to be the same as quoting God. Quoting Scripture is the same as quoting God. And here scripture speaking to Pharaoh is God speaking to Pharaoh. Being an absolute monarch, Pharaoh assumed that, certainly within his own realm, everything he said and did was by his own free choice to serve his own human purposes. But God made clear through Moses that Pharaoh was divinely raised up to serve a divine purpose, a purpose of which the king was not even aware. Pharaoh was a monarch. What he said was law. If he said it was law. And he felt when he said it, it was law. And, that was and God says, you're there because I put you there. For this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you. And Paul was quoting Exodus chapter 19 and verse 16. God, this is who God called for. Almost as one would do in a play on the stage of world history. It's his story saying, in essence, I will use you to demonstrate my power. It is not as if Pharaoh had said, I want to believe in you and be saved. In fact, when Pharaoh is faced with the clear demonstration of God's power and refuses to bow down instead of becoming pardoned, 
he refused. Raised up. For this purpose, I raised you up. He carries the idea of bringing forth or lifting up and was need, was used of the raising of historical figure in a position of prominence. So God raised up Pharaoh to do exactly what he wanted him to do. And I look at the same thing with our pres president. I believe God is trying to tell America something. He raises certain people up to do certain things for his purpose and his accomplishment, and it may make us be more aware of the need of Christ. And so Paul says for that very that very purpose. And that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole world. That word proclaim, to declare. It means to herald thoroughly, to declare fully, far and wide. And so it declares plainly, fully and exactly, this is what God wants to accomplish in the life of Pharaoh. Romans 9 verse 18 says this, Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and wherein he will have hardness. Once again, here is a general conclusion is drawn from the apostle he had to say in these three preceding verses, is denying that God was unrighteous in loving Jacob and hating Esau. It exhibits the ground of God's dealing both with the elect and the reprobate. It includes that his own sovereign pleasure is to rule both with respect to those whom he receives and those whom he rejects. He pardons one and hardens another without reference to anything but his own sovereign will. He doesn't say that Esau was better than Jacob. He doesn't say that Pharaoh was better than Moses. God is not changeable with his injustice in electing some and not others. For that is the act of mere mercy and compassion and that can be no violation of his justice. God operates on His mercy and His compassion. If you're out, if let's say that you are, say that a boat overturns and there are 14 people in the water, how many of them are going to drown if they're in the Atlantic Ocean? All of them. What if you have a choice of saving one? Would that be unjust? No. Are you going to show compassion on at least one? But they all are going to drown? And all of us are going to drown in sin unless God comes down and has compassion and mercy on us. Why he does that is his own good pleasure. I don't understand. It makes me feel more it makes me feel more unworthy because I think there's so many more people worthy, more worthy than I am, which is not true because we all start out the same same way. And he hardeneth whom he desires. Hardeneth means to make hard or stiff and is used only figurative to refer to the heart of the mind. And God, and, and the mind cannot turn towards God. It's a very interesting concept and a certain and good thought. So, therefore, he hath mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will harden if he hardeneth, because of his mercy and his compassion. I think that's about as clear as it can be, don't you think? That's what God does, and Paul illustrates that God is justice because he knew, Paul knew that people would raise questions. God has a right to do that. We don't have a right to do that. And God does it. Let's bow our heads for prayer this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for having compassion on us.
We don't understand all that you do, but we know that there's no injustice in what you do. And Lord, we owe you our lives. No merit on our own, but because of you had mercy, and then your mercy had compassion, and your compassion brought about our salvation. We're grateful that you've done that for us. We pray that you would direct our hearts and may we grow in Christ. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen and amen. We want to sing a cappella? Yeah. Run off and left it at home. Let's stand, please. We'll sing a song and then we'll be dismissed.